All right, so welcome back. So far we've talked about descriptive statistics, uh, sample mean and population mean, right? Those are what, mu and sigma and x bar and mu x bar is our sample mean. We talked about that. We talked about mu, which is our population mean. We also talked about uh, our standard deviations, s for the sample and S squared is the variance, S is the standard deviation, sigma squared is the population variance, and sigma is the population standard deviation. Um, and then we talked about probability. We talked about P, probability of something happening, and we looked at discrete and continuous distributions. What we're going to talk about today is the normal distribution. And we're going to work it, work on some problems too. Well, I might put those in a different video. We'll see how I feel when I get there. Um, so what is the normal distribution? Well, normal distribution is a particular continuous probability distribution. It looks like this. It's a curve, really. So normal distribution is curve. And because it's a probability function, it has some properties. We'll draw one, we'll write the formula, and we'll talk about it. So normal distribution, a curve. And this is the formula. So we have x. In this case, before, remember when we looked at dice, x could be uh, any, anywhere between 1 and 6, and that was it. It had to be a, an integer between 1 and 6. Well, now we have x can be anywhere from negative infinity to positive infinity. So our number line, which goes from 0 all the way here, all the way here, any of those is possi a possible value of x. doesn't mean that it's probable, but it's possible, right? And then the function for the normal distribution, the probability distribution function, is given a for, has a formula. And I'm going to show you the formula. We're not going to work with it too much, but I'll, I'll read it aloud. I want it looks scarier than it is, and I want to convince you of that by showing it to you and then explaining to you why it's not so scary. Okay, so how probable is x? That's what this function tells us. So f of x is equal to 1 over sigma times the square root of 2 pi. All that, that fraction times e raised to negative quantity x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. Okay. So. It's a little bit messy, but there's nothing in here you haven't done before, I'm sure, uh, right? Because we have we have we have a few symbols. F of x we worked with that already. That's going to be our probability, right? Or that's the that's the shape of the function. And so what we're going to do is we're going to draw this function, right? This is the x-axis, and then f of x is what's above it, remember? Okay, so sigma we dealt with. That's going to be the standard deviation, right? I'm going to abbreviate it SD, but you can hear me. So that's standard deviation. Mu is the mean, and those are the parameters. Those are the ones we need to classify it. Pi, pi is just 3.14159, right? It's an irrational number, a transcendental number, 3.14159. So this is the square root of 2 pi. That's just like the square root of 6-ish. Um, so that's just the square root of 2 pi looks complicated. It's just 6 something. So 1 over 6 times our standard deviation. And then e is just a number that's equal to 2.72, something like that. It's the net, it's the base of the natural log. You can just Google it. So again, this is just, a, it looks like a letter, but it's actually just a number that's complicated to write. So we use e. And then we have this part up here, which is just an exponent, e raised to this. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to plug in mu and sigma, right? Once we know them, we can plug those right in. This is going to be our variance down here, sigma squared. And then all we have left that we don't know is x. And the way that this works is we plug in x, right? We pick an x that's very low, like negative a bajillion. And uh, we grind it through the formula. Grind it through the formula. We take this constant, 1 over square root of 2 pi sigma. Multiply it by this raised to, and then we plug in negative bajillion up there, and it turns out that this will give you a very small number. So that's going to be very low, and then we keep plugging in different x's, different x's. X is getting larger and larger and larger, and f of x is getting larger, and then we cross over mu, and x begins to get smaller. And this is what that curve will look like if you if you graph it. You have mu here, and usually we put sigma up here. 
Okay. So that's a normal curve. This is the function. This is what that function is. It's just graphing this curve. Okay. Not that complicated, really. Uh, important things to know. Let's talk about the properties of them for a little bit. Let me scroll down and give us some, a little bit more room. I'm going to talk about properties of, the norm, of normal functions. Well, they're probability functions, which means that the entire area underneath is equal to 1. The reason for that is that the possibility of all, if you take account of all possible x's, the most it can be, or the, they have to add up to 1, right? There's a 100% chance that x falls in there somewhere. And that area is, is our probability. So area is a measure of probability. Um, our, normal fun our normal distribution is a function. Mm, what this means is, well, for any x, it'll give us p. That's what it does. You give it an x, it gives you a p, right? It gives you a probability. This is, these are true of all, all probability functions, by the way. Uh, it's got a unique mean, which is equal to the mode which is equal to the median. So all the averages are the same. Uh, and the mean can take on any real value. So mean is also any any number. Negative a bajillion could be mu, mu if, it, if it were a real number. OK, the other really important thing is that it is symmetric. Okay, so the two important, really important ones, it's symmetric, and the total area is 1. For our purposes, those are important. Uh, it's kind of important that we can get a p from any x, but that's fine. Okay, so that's that's a normal curve. Um, you can roughly think of mu as the location parameter, right? There are lots of different normal curves. We just drew one of them on here, but we can draw. I can draw a different one. So this is a curve with a different mu mu here. There's another curve over here that has a different mu. And these might have the same standard deviation. In addition, we can uh, draw one here that has the same mu but a different standard deviation. And these two parameters, the standard deviation and the mean, or the variance and the mean, since the standard deviation and the variance are, uh, are linked, um, the, the standard deviation and the mean, they uniquely identify a normal curve, which means that there's a whole family of shapes, just like there's a whole family of rectangles. And um, there's a whole family of normal curves. And just like a base and a height, will define a specific rectangle, the mean and the standard deviation. The location, left to right, that's the mean, and the squishedness, the squished togetherness or spread outness, it's a standard deviation. Those uniquely identify normal curves. Um, and that's useful to know. Okay, so that's a normal, normal distribution. The most important normal distribution, the one we're going to work with the most, is uh, the standard normal distribution. The standard normal distribution looks like this. Okay, I'll draw it here for you. Okay, so that looks just like a normal curve, except for a few things. One, we use z instead of x. It's so important, it gets its own letter. Two, the mean of the standard normal curve is zero, and the standard deviation is equal to the variance is equal to one. And that's unique about the standard normal curve. Other characteristics? Uh, well, it's symmetric, again, and the area is one. Those are the important ones. We're going to use these a lot. Okay. Uh, in order to convert between any two, any uh, any standard or any normal curve and the standard normal, you can use this formula. This is called the score function. We'll write it down now, and we'll make use of it, so you'll get some practice. But I'll just give it to you now. Z equals x minus mu sub x over sigma sub x. This is how you standardize any other. So you want to know how far away something is. Well, you want to or relative to in the standard normal curve. Uh, you can use this score function to find that out. Where am I? There we go. So this is the standard normal curve. It's a shape. It really is. It's just a shape. It's a very popular shape, though, right? We have tables that tell us characteristics about the standard normal curve, which makes it useful. Okay. In particular, we have tables that look like this. I'll show you one now. Let's see if it shows up. Okay. There we go. Uh, skip it over a little bit. Let me hide my ruler here, my ribbon. 
so I can talk about it a little bit. So this is the standard normal curve that you're going to see in your folder um, or that I gave you in class. And this is what it looks like, okay? Um, it's got a curve at the top. I call this a zero to Z table. Because for any Z, it tells you the area between zero and Z. That's what it does. It tells us this area right here, which is useful. It's all we really need. The way this works is you have a Z. Let's say you have a Z of what? 0 0.57. Well, you want to find out what the that area is. So you take Z and you go down here to 0 0.5. And then you go across to 0 0.07 because when you add those together, so you go across over to here to 0 0.07. So if you follow this over to here, you get 0 0.2157 is what that says. So that area is equal to 0 0.2157. That area is going to be the probability that 0 is less than z is less than 0 0.57 if you were to draw it randomly. And that's equal to 0 0.2157. That's what that table tells you. Now you can find another one. Let's consider the possibility, for example, that uh, we have, say we want to know the area between 0 and negative 1.42. We'll get some more practice with this, but I just want to show you real quick. Okay, so we want to know that. We want to know what this area is here. Well, this doesn't have negative numbers on it, but it's symmetrical, so it doesn't matter. We can just look on the table, go down to 1.4 and 2, and you find that the area in the positive would be 0.4222 right here. So we're at 1.42. Uh, which, But because it's symmetric, that's true of this side too. So this is 0.4222. Finally, we can use our other property to figure out some other stuff. Let me make sure I'm doing okay on time. Getting kind of tight, but should be okay. Let's say we want to know the area to the right of 1.58. Right? We want to know this area over here. Well, if we look up 1.58, 1.5, and then go over to 8, you see 0.4429 is what they give us. But it turns out that 0.4429 is this area. Right? What we wanted is this area over here. Now, fortunately, because the total area is 1 and it's symmetric, we know that this, this whole half has an area of 0.5. So to find the area of the tail there, we take 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4429, and we subtract. If we do that, We'll find that the area in the tail there is 0 0.571. So this area over here, 0 0.571. So that's how you use a 0 to Z table. It's how you use a, a standard normal table. We have a standard normal distribution, and they give us a Z. Uh, we can find a P. One other thing we can do, we can find a <clears throat> what we can find the uh, a Z given, a, or we can find, yes, sorry. <laughs> if they give us a probability, or an area under the curve, we can find the z. We'll do a little bit of that when we get to the practice problems. Um, but for now, you can see that this is basically what we have to work with. The inside here, these are this area here, these are the areas in the body of the table. And the borders are our z's. These are values of z. The top and the side lead us there. Okay, so that's just an introduction to normal curves and the standard normal distribution. Um, I recommend, um, and yeah, I'm going to put up some practice problems so that you can get some practice working on them. Uh, and I'll walk through, actually, before I do that, I'll walk through the four steps to solve any normal distribution problem. Okay, thanks. Hope you enjoy, and we'll see you again soon.